Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, I'm gonna show you six things that you can do to improve the performance of your Power BI desktop machine. Let's go. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right. So usually what we do on Guy in a Cube stems from someone asking a question or just us digging around. In this case, it was a question. Cristiano said, I'm very new to Power BI and I'm struggling now with computer limitations. The resources of my first data model are just two Excel files and the model size is about 17 megabytes. I thought it was a common limitation, but when watching one of the optimization videos, the file's about 600 megabyte and the computer was handling it. As a result of the tips, the file in the video shrinks down to about 50 megabytes, which is about three times bigger than my file. I'm now using Windows 10, eight gigabytes of RAM and a 2.5 gigahertz CPU, but the computer hangs. Is there anything missing on the specs of my computer or anything with the Power BI desktop file itself or anything else I should pay attention to? Cristiano, great question. I actually get this every once in a while, so I wanted to go through and just talk about some things you can do to optimize your machine for Power BI Desktop. I've got six items, but there are definitely more ways you could do this that get more into the weeds and is gonna be outside of this video, but these things should generally help you. And this is coming from 15 years of support and troubleshooting and just using tools to help you diagnose problems. So let's get into this. So the first item involves, wait a second, Nafal is talking. Let's head over to my laptop and see what we can do. All right, the first item we've got is reboot. Yes, I said reboot. When in doubt, reboot. So, you know, most machines, when you go through things and you leave them on for a long time, they can, you know, clog up the system a little bit. You got a lot of applications running and whatnot. So rebooting the machine or restarting the machine will help free up those resources and bring your computer back to an original state. If you're ever hitting any problem and your machine's been running a long time, definitely try rebooting the machine to see if that helps clear things up. So you'd restart and then reproduce, try to reproduce the issue again. If you've already booted up the machine and it's performing the problems, then restarting is not gonna help you at all because you basically just did that. The second item I keyed on from Cristiano's question was his memory. So he's got eight gigabytes of RAM, Normally I like to have a little more room than that just because Windows is gonna be taking up space out of that eight gigabytes. Also any other application you run is going to take space out of that. Nowadays with like, since Windows 8, I've, my comfort level has been around 16 gigabytes of RAM, not eight. So let's just look at mine real quick. I'm gonna to go to Task Manager. So this is the first tool that I'm gonna show you. Right click on your taskbar on the bottom and then go to Task Manager. And then I'm gonna go over to the performance tab. And so one thing we can see right away is that I'm using almost six gigabytes of memory already on my machine. So if you if I only had eight gigabytes of RAM, that only leaves me about two gig, which is not a lot of space. Now, I'm fortunate enough in this laptop to have 64 gig of memory, but you don't necessarily need that. That's kind of overkill. For most machines nowadays, since Windows 8, I've, my comfort level has been around 16 gigabytes of RAM. You've got 16 gig of RAM, that's usually enough to do what it is you need to do with like Office applications and even Power BI Desktop for most models. The thing to consider with Power BI Desktop is that it's an in-memory model. So it's gonna want to put all the data in memory. So let's do a quick test here. I'm gonna open up Power BI Desktop. I'm just gonna pull in a very small Excel or CSV file and just see, cause he said he only had two Excel files and it was like 16 meg on disk, which is actually pretty healthy. So let's do, all right. So I've got some data here. Let's go see what this is taking up in memory. And so right now I'm already at over seven gigs. So this was about a gig of memory. And we can come back over to processes and verify that. If I look at Power BI Desktop, you can see that it's, it's getting close to a gig of memory just for this small file. So that's how much space Power BI Desktop's gonna take up. And then let's just go ahead and save it and see, see how much space this takes up. So that took 30K. So if he's got 16 meg or 17 meg on disk, that's bigger, it's gonna take more than a gig of memory. So right there, that's that's probably where you're gonna be hitting your problem there with eight gig of RAM. Eight gig of RAM is very limiting. The third thing we can look at that tends to affect applications is your video card. 
So what I recommend here is make sure you're running the latest driver of the video card. So one thing we can do is we can go to, if I right click on the start button, come up to device manager. And if we go to display adapters, you will see items that are here. So in this case, I've got two because of the way the laptop's configured. I've got the built-in Intel graphics card on the motherboard, and then it's also got an NVIDIA video card as well. So the NVIDIA card, I can go to nvidia.com and then go update the driver from there. If you know, this is a way you can go figure out what model you have to go get that driver. The other thing with the Intel driver, so if I go to properties of that item, actually I can just, just right click on it and say update driver and then search automatically. And this will make sure that you've got the latest one that's coming from Windows Update. In the case of mine, I've got the latest driver. And if it's an Intel graphics item, you should have the latest driver uh, because Windows is gonna take care of that. But for NVIDIA, I always go out, usually once a month or once every two months, I go to NVIDIA.com and I update the driver on this laptop. If you're running a GeForce graphics card, which I am in my desktop, I actually have the GeForce Experience app and then that notifies me when there's a new driver and I install it from there. Always make sure you have the latest driver. The fourth thing goes in line with the video driver and this is your browser. So Power BI Desktop, is going to use your browser to render the visuals. It, that's what's there. So it's using JavaScript, it's using other items to render those visuals. So it's gonna use the browser core underneath to do that. One of the things you can go do is if you're having struggles with hanging things of that nature or it's sluggish, you could try disabling hardware acceleration in the browser and see if that helps. So let me go into Edge. I'll go to Settings and I'll come down to system. And then there's an item here called use hardware acceleration when available. I would disable that on your default browser. I know everyone's using Edge, so you know that's where you would do it. Or if you're using Chrome, you'd wanna do it there. The other thing I would do is Internet Explorer is on this machine as well, and I would, do, I would disable it there as well. So if I go into Internet Explorer, let's go up to the gear, we'll go to Internet Options, go over to Advanced, and then that first item, use software rendering instead of GPU rendering. Make sure that's checked and then restart the browser. Then what I would do for good measure is reboot the box and then try it again and see if that helps. My gut feeling is that the memory is more the issue than the video card, but this is something that you could go do that could potentially help improve items. All right, the fifth item is the big item that I wanna go through. And this has to do with your background application. So you saw right off the bat, go back to task manager. You saw right off the bat that I'm running, uh, by default, I'm running at about six gig of memory usage on my machine. And this has to do with what's actually running. So I've got Windows, I've got other applications that are running in the background. And if I come to the process tab, this will show me the apps that I'm running. And so in this case, you can see I'm running OneNote, I'm running Camtasia, which is gonna take some memory because it's recording some video. And then I've got a bunch of other background processes that are there. So I've got some Adobe stuff and other items. So this is something that I would go through typically when I was in support, what we would do is call the clean boot. And the clean boot basically means let's disable all the startup stuff and see if that helps the situation. Go and right click on the start button, go to run and type in MS config. This is a tool I used a lot when I was in support. The idea of clean boot would be if I do selective startup and uncheck those items and reboot. Normal startup would be where we just load everything without consideration. You can even go a step further and do diagnostic startup to just load the base Windows services. And then you can go to the individual items and see what it's loading as well. So I can go to boot. Uh, I can actually change boot options. So like if I wanna go into start or if I wanna go into safe mode, I can do that here. I can look at services that are running. So these are Windows services that I could end up disabling, or I can go to startup, which is gonna go look at the task manager piece. So when I go to task manager, you will see a startup tab where you can see all of these items. And then there's some links to some other, or and then there's some items to some other tools that you can end up doing. MS Config is a great tool that can help you with startup items. So whenever you make those changes, just reboot your machine and see what it does. One thing I like to do is in, in MS Config, just do a selective startup, uncheck those two checkboxes, reboot, just see if that helps. If it doesn't, then just go back to normal startup. Your problem's probably gonna be more closer to memory or physical resources on your machine. All right, the sixth item. I wanna talk about is antivirus. So let me go ahead and do Windows Defender. 
go to Windows Defender settings. So antivirus can absolutely impact an application on your machine. By default, it's, it's doing its thing and keeping your machine safe, but sometimes if you're doing like real-time scans, it could end up affecting an application that's trying to run. One thing I've seen in support is when you go in uh, and possibly adding exceptions to your antivirus for a given folder path. So in this case, the Power BI desktop folder path to make sure that it's not impacting the execution of the application there. So in my case, I'm using Windows Defender. You may be using something like McAfee or Norton or whatever antivirus out there that you may be using. And so most antivirus programs, or actually every antivirus program I've known of will have these type of options. Again, this is an advanced item. So if you're not comfortable with this, definitely don't do it. Uh, but if you are comfortable and you have the capability of doing this, this may be something to try. And so if I go into Virus and Threat Protection in Windows Defender, I can come down to Settings. One thing you'll see is real-time protection. I don't really recommend disabling this, but if you have a test machine or something that you could do a quick test of turning it off, trying running Power BI Desktop, and then getting results, turn it back on. Just remember to turn it back on. And then the other thing you're gonna see down here are exclusions. So these are items that we just say we will not scan. So this is something you could do as a test also. Again, I don't recommend leaving these settings in place. Antivirus is there for a reason. So, but you could go through and you could end up adding uh, certain exclusions. So you could do a specific file, a folder, or a given process. I don't recommend doing a process because there could be exploits or something that could happen there. But from a folder perspective, if you want to do an exception for the folder that Power BI Desktop is in, that might be something worth trying and just see if that helps. I've, in all the years that I was in support, antivirus did some wonky things and caused some weird performance issues. So that's something you could definitely try. Whew, that was a lot of items. That's kind of some nerdy stuff, right? But these are all things that can affect your machine and performance from a given application perspective, not even Power BI Desktop. So your mind has now been expanded. I've also got a link down in the description below. I put together kind of a cheat sheet that goes through these items as well to help you with links to processes and just things to go after and look at so that you don't have to rewatch this video over and over again. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What do you, what do you think about those items that I mentioned or the tools that I showed you from MS Config? Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.